everybody, it is me, Jurassic Alt, here to say that uh, today we're going to be talking about Tales from the Pizza Plex, Book 3, Story 2, Pressure. Oh my goodness, I freaking loved this story. This story was great. I loved everything about this story. I, it was just amazing. I am not going to do the lengthy intro, let's just hop right into the story. So the summary of the story is about Luca and three of his friends go to the Mega Pizza Plex and they go to this role-playing area called the Urban Legends, which is basically kind of just poking fun at the past and basically role-playing events of what happened in the past. Uh, the group decides that they're going to do a role-playing scene called the Green-Eared Killer, and Luca doesn't want to play the killer and is kind of just pressured in playing the killer to play Springtrap. Puts on the suit and mentions that it's really smelly and looks really realistic. And the reason why Luca doesn't want to play the killer is because he knew somebody who was kidnapped and killed when he was younger. So Luca puts on the suit. The suit randomly locks up when he puts on the suit, which seems kind of strange, but he kind of ignores it. As they're going to the set, the green-eared killer, Luca notices someone, uh, an employee named Carl, kind of staring at some kids, but kind of seems weird and is going to confront him, but loses the guy. Kind of just seems weird. So they go on to the set of the, the green-eared killer. It looks like Fazbear of rights but with an F1 stage and a safe room. Throughout the role play, Luca feels like the suit is slowly closing in on him, which kind of comes at the end of the story. Luca first encounters his group of friends because they're kind of playing kids who are exploring the Fazbear of rights thing. The stage turns on and then the power goes out and the animatronics start to move around and kind of just spooks everybody. Luca learns that he is actually in an actual spring lock suit and is like, I don't want to be in this game anymore and tries to walk out, but he can't walk out because everyone has to agree, I guess, on this panel thing saying, hey, we all don't agree and we're going to leave now. But he has to get everybody to agree, hey, can we leave so I can get out of this? Suit. They're out of this game. Basically, Luca chases his friends around, basically cat and mouse, and then Luca basically passes out, and his friends leave him in. Then Luca wakes up and sees that the costumes have moved around in the background, and new kids have entered the kind of set now with Carl, the ninth guard from earlier, in the green rabbit suit, trying to kill the kids. Carl gets one of the kids and is about to kill him, and Luca saves the kid. And uh, Luca kills Carl and dies. Man, that was just a crazy story. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about some side note things that I want to mention. They mention Golden Freddy. Oh my god goodness i was so freaking happy that they mentioned golden freddy because i watched matt pat's video and i usually try not to to watch his theory videos but i'm like hey i already got my theory out for this so i can't i wanted to see what he said about it and he was talking about help wanted and said none of it was real and i was so furious i'm like what do you mean the last eight years have been a lie but this disproves it. Matt Pat, I'm sorry, you're wrong about this. Golden Freddy is real. Yeah, just thought I wanted to mention that. Also, the sets kind of remind me of the Help Wanted rooms that you could go in Security Breach and in Help Wanted, kind of just the uh, different stages. They mentioned that there are VR games here, which, and they recycled a spring lock suit. A freaking spring lock suit from the original, like, Fred Bear's Diner. Now, it is a green suit, so this could mean Mean it is the original kind of Springtrap suit that Springtrap had before he went into maybe Scrap Chat or Scrap Chat? Scrap Trap and then goes to Burnt Trap. So this might be the original one from FNAF 3. This is the Spring Lock suit that after was in. Quite possible. They also mentioned when they enter the prop set room, they mentioned an old archway, but, and I felt like that was important because I was like, maybe that was a connection to the pizzeria entrance, but I don't think there's not really like a brick archway. So I don't know that the connection to that, but I, I, that wouldn't make sense because it would be connecting straight to Afton and it wouldn't make sense. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. It just, that seemed, the, the, old, the old archway just seemed very important also, I think they made a Happiest Day reference because on page 103, they mentioned this. The dining area looked like it had been abandoned in the middle of a birthday party. Half eaten pizzas and half drunken soda sat on red and white striped tablecloths. Next to a bright yellow nap, Freddy Fazbear's birthday hats were thrown on the tables and chairs. Now, personally, I feel like that was a major reference to the Happiest Day. Could be wrong. I don't know. But the next thing is they... 
I think they brought in the original FNAF 1 animatronic suit because they throughout the story they mentioned old suits and just kind of FNAF 1 kind of stuff. Now, does that mean the original Golden Freddy suit that Cassidy is possessing is here too? Quite possibly, but I don't think Cassidy is possessing the suit. I think Cassidy might be already in Princess Quest, quite possibly. So I don't think Cassidy is in the suit. Also, if that's the case of them recycling old animatronic NF1 suits, wouldn't surprise me that we, they would recycle other stuff like tubes and stuff like that for perhaps that story because they mentioned a lot of just they mentioned a burnt orange uh, tube, which at first I thought it was like a darker orange. But now I'm thinking it was actually Scorch and that uh, my previous theory that Haps was not possessed by an animatronic, but kind of just possessed by agony. So that technically proves that, which is really cool. I really hope that's true. And right now it's really looking like it. They also make a help wanted reference on page 113. It says, I knew it. In one of the VR games, the security guard uses audio system to play a character's voice to distract Springtrap. So this means one of two things. There is a help wanted game at the Mega Pizza Plex, or he bought the game and took it home and was just kind of a game at home. And the second thing is the three ki little kids who go in after his friends leave uh, Luca, there is a blonde girl and a girl with black hair and a boy. Now the blonde girl kind of reminds me of Elizabeth and the girl with black hair reminds me of Golden Freddy and the boy reminds me of Crying Child. So I don't know if that might've been, that might've been a reference there Quite possibly. Three very important characters in the FNAF lore. Urban Legends kind of area reminded me of the underground area below the daycare with all the rooms where it's got the kind of dress up rooms. So now let's talk about the meat of the theory. All right, so my main theory I'm gonna, they mention in the story that there are speakers in this thing and a control panel. And I thought that was very interesting and weird. I'm like, okay, cool, I'm gonna keep that. That's kind of interesting. But when I first read this, I was so hyped because I think this story honestly is telling us that Afton's cult and glitch trap kind of thing is happening. Now hear me out. They talk about Carl is trying to kill these kids. We haven't seen a killer since Vanny and before Vanny it was glitch trap and this kind of VR in the VR games and Matt Pat had a theory that glitch trap is going to start making this kind of Afton cult instead of dealing with one killer we have multiple killers that we have to deal with and I was so hyped was like, oh my goodness this is gonna be so cool in the game and we saw nothing in security breach nothing at all to prove this and I was like ah, damn that's a waste of real potential I think the games I think the books is starting to go down this route. Now the question is, but why? Well, Carl could have been one of the people who play test the game and kind of like what happened to Jeremy, instead of Jeremy uh, cut his face off, but maybe Carl said, you know what, hells yeah, let's join this cult. And it's killing kids for Afton. Carl does wear a uh, spring trap suit. On page 139, it says, Earl's unmistakable short head was about to be concealed inside a cheap Halloween costume-like Springtrap rabbit head. The rest of Earl was already covered by an equal cheap-looking Halloween costume-like rabbit onesie. Both the head and body of Earl's suit was were designed to look like the one Luca was wearing. Earl's suit, however, was obviously a costume. It wasn't a real Springlock suit, like the one killing Luca. Okay, so that was my bad. His name was... Not Carl. I thought it was Earl. I mistyped on my comp on my uh, notes here. I put Carl instead of Earl. <laughs> so Earl is is probably part of the Afton cult. Now, how does that? What does that mean? Is there more Afton cult people out there? Probably, yeah. I really really hope that we get a future story like talking about Afton's cult and like maybe having it that game player who's playing Help Wanted and just has this urge to kill someone but tries to resist and that's just be a story. I really hope that they do that because I think that would be a really cool and further proving my point on this story. Then that kind of brings up the question, why is Vanessa the only one that we see in Security Breach? Well, technically everyone else has been fired except for Vanessa. There was that meeting that could be a connection there of whatever happened during that meeting could be explaining what really happened. Maybe Vanessa was the only reason why she was the only one who survived is because she killed everyone else because maybe she was like, hey, I'm the true successor to Afton's cult uh, thing. 
I should be the only one here or I don't know. I don't know. I really hope we get a story on that one too. We will never know. But yeah, that is my theory there on that. Next thing, let's talk about the timeline. It doesn't elaborate, but I personally feel like if I had to put this in the timeline where I would probably say between Bonnie's death and Monty taking main stage slash Roxy. I'm, I'm the only reason why I'm saying that is because it seems like this springlock suit is real, like super realistic. Maybe that's when Afton switched kind of over to a new air quotes body by taking uh, Glamrock Bonnie's body and taking that quite possibly. So I'm going to, I personally feel like it's in between Bonnie and Monty kind of transition of Monty taking the center stage and Bonnie kind of being on the down low heading out. But uh, that's my personal theory on timeline wise. But uh, yeah, that is my theory, and that is this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. It means so much to me. You guys took the time out of your day to watch this video. Um, I'm, I'm really, really excited for this theory, because this theory could either go really badly and be like, Jurassic, you were way off. What the hell are you thinking? That's not at all where this, this uh, video is going, but... I really hope, I really, really hope that I, I, I got something here of like, this could be t potentially, this might be, I'm not saying this is bigger than B7, but this potentially might be as big as B, my B7 theory. And if you haven't seen B, my uh, theory video on B7, please go watch that because I'm really proud of the thumbnail and the editing like that. I took a, like that, that video, I I'm really proud of. Go please check that out video. I, I don't like promoting myself, but like please do check out that video if you like this kind of content. But yeah, um, that is my theory. Thank you guys so much for watching. It means so much to me. You took the time that I already did that. Um, I don't know what else to do. I don't do outros. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, remember hot dogs? No. Remember the sun and airplanes don't go together, I guess. I don't know. Wow.